Hi there, David here from davidfrosick.com. Now, I was recently running some ads online and the client said to me, how much you know, have we made from that 100 pound spend? So we spent 100 pound ads and then we had about 500 pounds of sale and the client said, you know, that's pretty much like a break even for us, so it's not really you know, a major factor. And I thought to myself, well, I wonder how many of those people actually purchased a gain? And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can figure this out if you're running Google Ads using Shopify, and in this one I'm using Klaviyo. I'm gonna show you how you can find an ad that you're running and track it right down to the exact person that purchases and then find out if they purchase again. You gotta focus on what's real, man. <laughs> Okay, now before we start, you've got to realize when you're running Google Ads, you can just go and set up your ad and they'll using this dynamic headline thing now. So you can run it and they'll create loads of different ads based off the headlines that you put in. But one of the key things you must put in is the UTM tracking code. This is a universal code that's used across the web and allows you to track different things like campaign, source, medium, uh, content type terms, all these different things that you can track. So you must create these UTM links. Now you would have visit sites on the web where you click on them and the URL across the top is quite long and it has like question marks and UTMs and all these different things. And that's because people or website owners and marketers, we track things that people are clicking on on our sites because it shows in our um, analytical platform. Now here I am on the campaign URL builder. This is a Google um, campaign URL builder. You can put in the website URL that you want to track, so where you're sending traffic to or the ads, and then you create things like campaign IDs, um, source, you have a medium, you have a campaign name, and then you have the op optional term and content. So for this, for example, we were setting up some Google ads, so we had the Google ad um, was the campaign source, um, the medium was paid search, we're doing a paid search results on this campaign, and then for the campaign name, I think for the campaign name I just used Google Ad. I'll show you that in a moment. So if you're on this page, the URL builder here, if you scroll on down, you can get examples below what they suggest you can use. So for campaign ID, it might just be the name or the number, depending on the email sequence or anything like that that you're using, as long as you can track it and you know what it's used for. So you've got campaign um, ID, source could be like Google, the medium could be um, CPC or cost per click, whatever you're running. Uh, the name might be the spring sale, for example, and then you can drill down into term, which could, if you were targeting like a specific item on the site, and then um, down to content here, for example, this one is like logo links. So say if you were tracking a link, which links were clicked on on a particular page, if you created a landing page, which links were they clicking on that got through to the product. Um, so you can really drill down to find out what people are doing on your website. Now for me, I wanted to find out exactly which customers had purchased from a Google ad and then I want to see if they purchased again. So here we are inside of the URL builder. So this is how you build a URL first. Now when you build a URL, you then copy the URL below. It generates the URL here, and you then copy this URL and you put it into your um, Google Ads. So in exam my example, I'll jump to Google Ads here. And here I am on the Google Ads page. Now at the bottom here, you can see it says final URL prefix. Now this code you see here is that UTM code that I taken from the Google uh, campaign URL builder. And you can see here I've got source, the source is Google Ads, so I know all the people that are coming from this ad, they're coming from Google Ads. The medium is paid search for this campaign, and then for the campaign name I just used GAD because I had other ones running and I wanted just to know these ones are coming specifically from this Google ad that we're running on. So this is the campaign, this is the final UTM um, code, the tracking code. You'll see this on other ad platforms like Facebook, they offer you the chance to put in this final URL, like what is the prefix of the URL, and that's so you can track the performance and get results from your ads. There's no point in doing ads unless you're getting results from it, and also you, those results are measurable, so that's the key thing. So there you go, inside of Google Ads, you must put in this UTM source code. This is the major, major thing you've got to put in. If you don't put it in, you won't be able to get tracking results. So now, if I jump to Shopify, inside of Shopify here, you can see we're on the sales attributed to marketing page. Now, one thing about this page, which is really poor, not poor, it just hasn't maybe been thought about yet, but these orders, you can see, so we run an ad here, which has got G ad, so we know these. this was coming from our Google ad, and in this particular time period, last in a month it's set, we've had two sales from that particular ad. And I can't now click through and find out who those customers are. That's all I was trying to do, is find out who those customers were, and then did they purchase again? That was my only goal I wanted to get, because I wanted to say to the client, okay, fair enough, if we've spent that money, let's see if they purchased again. So we had, see we had two orders from this particular ad in the last um, 30 days or so, and I still can't click this. And there's no report inside of Shopify where you can drill down to find out who's 
clicking through your ads and where they're coming from and buying. So you can you can see the information, but you can't find the actual customer that made the purchase. You, you want to be able to go in and go, right, wh who's this customer? Who are they? Where'd they come from? Is it their first time they've ordered? Or have they then purchased again? So that was my real pain point. I went searching online for this, tried to figure it out, and I was like, well, I've got the UTM codes. I must be able to find something inside the platform. And for this site, we're actually using Klaviyo to run all the emails. And I know inside of other platforms like Drip, um, I think Active Campaign as well, you can do this. You can filter down to find out where people are coming from and what they're clicking on, and then they can be tagged based off those UTM codes. So inside of Shopify, you can't see here, right? So there's no way of seeing which sales are. If there is a way, I couldn't find it out, and I'm, I went through here for ages trying to figure this out. Um, here I am inside of Klaviyo. Now the cool thing inside of Klaviyo is it will track all those people that come for you through your site on different UTM links. So you can have, um, when you send out an email from Klaviyo for example, it can automatically add on these UTM codes to every clickable link in an email. And that's things like the campaign ID, the flow, um, or the email name, and then all these different various things you can put on. You can customize those and actually add on other ones. So what I done inside Clavio is I ran this definition or that I ran this segment here and you can see here, here's the definition of it. It says UTM medium um, paid search. If I just, if I actually click on this. So what I've done inside of Clavio is I've created a segment. So I'll just edit this definition here. So what thing you can do is you can build segments based off different actions that people take across all these different links, clickable links, pages they view and all that kind of stuff. But one of the things here is properties about someone. So if you choose properties about someone and then you choose the UTM options you've got here. Now you've got UTM options like campaign, content, source and term. Now for my particular one I was running here, I couldn't find anyone who'd come from the, uh, I think it was a campaign name. Um, or the content, so but I was trackable through medium. And I found that if I was using the medium here, and then it came equals to, and then it gives you options um, when you click on, the, type in your um, term that you're searching for, it actually automatically brings up all these options that have, that's already collected. So you might already see your um, medium, the type, your UTM medium in the list when you do this, okay? So just that's thing to figure out. now. If you've been running your site longer and you've got more traffic coming through from the ads, you might find other uh, UTM codes like campaign name and source and things. So you can drill down based off um, those ads. But running this, I was able to bring up all the customers that had come to this site from that UTM um, code. So this was based off anyone who'd come to the site and equals this search term, or sorry, equals this UTM medium um, term, which is paid search and I could run my segment. Now, the beauty of that is I could then create another segment where I can create um, a command here to see how many people, or an, an if else command, or a rule to see who else had actually purchased. So if I go back to list and segments, for this particular um, example, we had 194 customers that had come through on that particular UTM search. So then I created another segment to see how many people had actually purchased, gone on to make another purchase. So if I edit the definition of this, we can go in and view it, and you can see this code. So look, we've got properties about someone, the UTM medium equals paid search, and then I said, and when someone has done or has not, so you choose has done, place an order is greater than one over all time. So from running this little segment, I was able to see exactly which customers had come from the Google Ads that we'd set up, and then actually gone on to make another purchase after the original first purchase. Now, just this one piece of information for me was massively powerful because I could go back to the client and I said, look, we've had 100 and I think it was 98 or whatever it was. At the time, it was about 181 people have come through and over 50% of those people had gone on to make another purchase. So while you are running Google Ads and you're doing this for yourself and you're setting up ads, although the ad might be a loss leader, in this example it was, people are coming in and we're breaking even on what they're spending, but then with no other marketing afterwards, they went on to make another um, purchase. Um, so they might have actually, when I say no other marketing, they might have actually got another email later on saying, um, you know, just some educational content had gone out or a couple of emails from the, um, this site, but there wasn't any sort of major marketing done to those people. So they'd gone on and then actually made another purchase. So the money was made in the second purchase and not actually the Google ads we we're running. So you'll find this, if you're running Google ads yourself and you're breaking even, you need to see, are those people coming back to purchase? And that is a real, real important thing for you running any ads. Now the beauty of doing this inside of Clavio is I can drill down and see exactly 
which customers come from Google Ads, what they bought, and if it was their first time on this website making a purchase. So that is how you can properly track any ads you run, anything that you're running traffic or kind of marketing campaigns to your site, and you wanna see which customers exactly, which customers purchased from that campaign that, or that marketing activity that you created and you've got started. So I hope that helps some of you. This is what you wanna build. What you're seeing here on the page is the exact um, segment order that I had based off if they placed an order. And obviously you can change this to see did they place an order greater than one, how many of them done other various things, uh, also how many of them haven't yet made a second purchase. So then you can now spend a bit of time marketing those people say, look, hey, we noticed you came from our ad, you bought a product, you know, did you like it? What was it like? Here's an offer, do you want to come this back home? We've got a free shipping deal or something. So the idea of creating these lists, segments in your lists allows you to find exactly which people are doing what, and then you choose to market correctly to those people, whatever it is you want to, um, you know, market to them. But it allows you to give the correct message to the right person at the right, right time, instead of just emailing everyone, hey, we've got an offer on, you wanna email people who you know have already spent on a particular product and how many times they've spent it. So it allows you then to change your word, your copy and your messaging to that people. So there you go, I hope that helps some of you. If you're using Klaviyo, Shopify, and you're running Google Ads or Facebook Ads, at the moment, um, Klaviyo for me was the easiest because it ties some so closely with um, Shopify but you can drill down into things with Drip to find out which tags are coming in for UTM sources, so you will be able to do the same kind of stuff there as well. Hope that helps some of you. I'll be back soon with more videos. Bye for now.